in DIY solar vehicles. The physics of solar energy means your dream of an unplugged, sun-powered car is already dead on arrival. California company behind a new solar-powered vehicle is close to beginning production. Every few years, some slick startup rolls out a concept. Lightyear, Aptera, Sono, promising infinite range from the sky. But why do they all eventually hit a financial wall and a physical brick wall? We're diving deep into the unshakable laws of physics, the brutally small amount of energy that actually lands on a car's surface, and why a solar panel on your house roof is a million times smarter than one bolted onto your car's roof. This isn't just about the batteries, it's about surface area, efficiency curves, and the ridiculous cost per watt of a square meter of automotive grade photovoltaic cells. Stay with me, because by the end, you'll understand the core, inescapable trade-offs that doom a pure solar vehicle, and why the next EV you buy is actually the better solar car. Let's get the geeky stuff out of the way first. Forget the marketing hype. We have to talk about physics. The amount of solar energy that hits the Earth's surface on a perfectly clear day is roughly 1,000 watts for every square meter. That's the absolute theoretical limit. No clouds, no shade, and the sun directly overhead. But we have two giant problems. One, the panel penalty. Even the best, most expensive solar cells we can practically integrate onto a car are only about 20% to 25% efficient. So that 1000 watts instantly shrinks to around 250 watts for every square meter. Two, the surface area trap. A typical car, a standard sedan or small crossover, has only around four to six square meters of total usable, mostly flat surface area for solar panels. So, let's do the math. Six square meters times 250 watts per meter square equals 1,500 watts or 1.5 kilowatts. That's barely enough power to run a quality coffee machine, yet we expect it to power a two-ton family sedan at 120 kilometers per hour. It's hilariously insufficient. Now for the real world range, in a sunny location like southern Spain or Australia, you might get about five peak sun hours a day. 1.5 kilowatts times five hours a day equals 7.5 kilowatt hours of energy generated per day. Compare this to a modern electric car, which typically consumes between 15 kilowatt hours and 25 kilowatt hours to drive 100 kilometers. 7.5 kilowatt from a full sunny day translates to gaining, at best, about 30 to 50 kilometers of range. That is a drop in the ocean compared to the 400 to 500 kilometer range provided by the car's 80 kilowatt battery. The car is simply too big and heavy for the tiny solar input it receives. The problem isn't also just power, it's the cost and weight penalty of achieving that meager power. Integrated solar panels are not the cheap standard solar panels you see on a house. They must be curved, lightweight, durable enough to withstand road debris, and integrated seamlessly into the body. This complexity drives the cost of the solar array through the roof. For the price of adding a high-tech solar roof that generates 7.5 kilowatt per day, a manufacturer could simply add an extra 10 kilowatt of battery capacity to the car. That battery capacity would give the driver an instant guaranteed 40 to 60 extra kilometers of range every single time it's charged from the grid for a fraction of the cost of the solar setup. It's an economic non-starter. Solar power also only works when the car is outside in direct sun and perfectly clean. Most cars spend the day parked in multi-story car parks under the shade of trees or in a garage. And when they are outside, road dust, bird droppings and grime quickly reduce the already low 25% efficiency down to 10% or even less. The commercial failures of ambitious projects like Lightyear and Sono Motors prove this wasn't just theory. Lightyear designed a stunningly aerodynamic vehicle, yet it failed. The sheer cost and complexity of integrating enough custom solar cells to make a difference pushed the price tag for the Zero model well over 250,000 euros. It simply could not build a commercially viable product when the complexity was constantly fighting the physics. Aptera survived by radically reducing the energy demand. It's essentially a three-wheeled teardrop, 
meaning it uses a fraction of the power of a standard EV. But to gain that solar range, it had to abandon practicality, offering only two seats and an extreme design. It remains a niche product, not a mainstream solution. The market has spoken. The cost of integrating solar panels outweighs the minimal benefit they provide. Other aspiring problem solvers are considering portable or mounted chargers. GoSun is one example. Their EV solar charger, which is a clever solution, is roof mounted and has to be unfolded and extended when parked to reach 1.1 kilowatt of power. It was designed for off-grid adventures and generates up to 20 miles of range daily. Other enthusiasts such as Beat the Bush tried charging his Tesla with a couple of Jackery Explorer solar panels and estimated that it could yield a measly 8 to 16 miles of range a day. Watt hour roughly if you drive really slowly so there's roughly six miles of range in here that I can put into the car. Why? Because the solar array needs to be much much bigger than the car's roof area and it needs to be set up to face the sun optimally. It stops being a permanent integrated car feature and becomes a piece of off-grid camping gear. This proves that for solar to be meaningful it needs massive unfoldable surface area which defeats the purpose of an everyday car. So, where does this leave us? The integrated solar car isn't a future killer technology. It's an engineering marvel that highlights what's technically possible, not what's practically sensible. The engineers behind these projects are genuine geniuses, but they are fighting a losing battle against the immutable laws of the universe and the cold economics of the mass automotive market. The truth is, the most revolutionary solar car on the road today isn't one wrapped in photovoltaic cells. It's a Tesla, a Volkswagen ID, or a Kia EV6 being charged in your garage from the massive, perfectly angled, grid-tied solar array on your house. That stationary rooftop system generates 10 times the power, costs a fraction of the price per watt, and allows you to drive a car that can actually carry four adults and their luggage without feeling like you're piloting a glorified wind-up toy. The ultimate solar EV is simply a grid-charged EV. Think about that.